In this video, I will show you several ways how you can save money in your 20s, and I will use my own life and my own experience as an example. I know not everything is applicable and possible for everyone. We're all different. We have different values when it comes to money. We have different ideas how we want to live our life and how we want to spend our money. So these are just ideas and I hope you'll find two or three of them or more and you can apply them to your life and start saving. I want to cover three big topics. The first one are the three game changers, housing, transportation and food, the biggest categories we have when it comes to spending. Then the second topic are any other monthly regular costs and then the third topic is lifestyle costs. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Rebecca and my channel is all about making personal finance simple and setting yourself up for financial success in the future. So if you wanna learn more about managing your money wisely, investing and saving, hit the subscribe button and now let's get started with the video. Let's start with the game changers, housing, transportation and food. These three categories are what we tend to spend on most in one month. They usually take up around 40 to 50% of our income. And I would say as students, this percentage is much, much higher because as a student, we earn either nothing or a very low income. So most of that income will obviously go to our housing, transportation and food because these are just necessities. So saving in one or more of these categories can have a major impact on your money situation. It will get you so much closer to your goals and so much faster than saving $10 here or $50 there in a different category. For me, the biggest saving potential in the past years has definitely been my housing situation. I have always lived with housemates to split the cost. I have always been very cost conscious when it comes to my rent and I've usually never shied away from taking one of the smallest rooms in the house because I don't need as much space and I'd rather save that money. I currently live and work in an expensive area in Germany, it's Frankfurt, and I've actually moved away from Frankfurt to a smaller town nearby because it's less expensive. I now pay around 430 euros a month for everything, for my rent, for my internet, for utilities, and if I were to live alone and not with housemates, it would be at least 200 euros more, and if I were to live in Frankfurt without housemates, that could be even higher. So I'm saving over 200 euros a month just by living with housemates at the moment. I also don't have a car, so I only use public transportation or my bike. And I know in many areas it's not possible. You need a car in order to get from point A to point B. But if you live in a major city and if public transportation is an option, then consider this. Or consider carpooling with a friend if you need to go somewhere in back. So maybe you switch one week, uh, your friend is driving, one week it's you driving. So you can save car costs. For me, my 20s are for experiences, for learning and for saving money. And I don't really have a problem for things to be a little less comfortable because I know in the future I will be making more money and I'd rather set myself up for financial success now and not accumulate debt. The last big category is food. I think each of us knows whether we actually overspend in that category or not. If you are someone who's really overspending, then yes, you can consider cutting down in that category. But for me and most of my friends, I don't think that category has a lot of saving potential because we're already very cost conscious there. Let's move on to the second big topic and that is other regular expenses. Why do I wanna talk about that? Well, if it's a regular expense, it's easy to identify. And if you manage to cut one or two of these out, you've just made a big impact on your money situation. Starting with insurances, I recently reevaluated the insurances I have. I don't really do that regularly. Maybe I should start doing that. And I changed my health insurance and also my personal liability insurance to one that's cheaper. To be honest, for the health insurance, because it's so normal in Germany to have health insurance, I didn't even know there are some that are less expensive than the other ones. But now I know, and now I'm with one that's cheaper. I'm not saying I'm recommending that to you because um, it really depends on where you live, but here in Germany, most of these actually have the same coverage. So it's not like I chose a worse plan or something. I just changed the company that provides the insurance. So be careful depending on where you live, but there are other insurances that you could think about changing to a cheaper one. For example, also your car insurance. Do your research and find out whether you're actually overpaying. The next item I checked was my phone bill. So I actually took advantage of Black Friday deals to find something that's 
less expensive than what I currently have and has more than double of the data that I currently had. So win-win and I secured that new phone plan. Subscriptions. Think about all the subscriptions you're paying for. Are you actually using them? Let's take the example of streaming services. There's Netflix, there's Disney Plus, there's Amazon Prime, there's Hulu, there's Apple something. There's so many streaming services and in my opinion we only need one, maximum two. And that's also the good thing about having housemates because if they have a different streaming service than you and you tend to watch together, then perfect. <laughs> I'm currently only paying for Netflix and I'm perfectly fine with that. I already spend way too much time on Netflix so I wouldn't need another streaming service and this way I save money. Just evaluate your habits and how much you use them and then decide wisely. Do you really need to spend these eight or 10 euros or dollars a month or could you save them? The last point I have written down for regular expenses is gym membership and I might have an unpopular opinion about that because I have just canceled mine about a year ago. Why? As I've mentioned before, I have moved to a different city. The gym is further away than it was before. I notice I'm not going as much and it's not worth the money. I currently really enjoy doing home workouts with YouTube and that's enough for me so I canceled the gym membership and that's what I'm doing currently. I'm not saying that I'll never go back to the gym. Who knows, maybe the next place I'll live will be closer to a gym and then I'll fall back in love with the gym, yes. But at the moment I don't use it, I'm saving the money and I'm happy with my home workouts. So to summarize this point, write down all the subscriptions you have, evaluate how much you're using them, and then ruthlessly cancel all of the ones that you're not using. You can also do a test period that you're canceling them and see whether you're actually missing them. And if you do, in a month or two, you can sign back up. The third point is lifestyle. And I think that's a very important topic in our 20s because in our 20s, we are trying out so many different things and we notice that some things don't really bring us happiness and why did we spend on that anyways? And on the other hand, we might realize, oh, this experience or this thing really did bring me happiness and I don't really mind spending money on that because that is where my values are. And yes, we get very influenced by social media, but we will notice that not all of these things that social media tells us we need to have or that other people have in their lives might actually be of value for our lives. And in our 20s, we also see or hopefully see many different salary jumps. So our income will increase and we get to decide how we spend our money. And lifestyle inflation is a term you might have heard about that our, when our income rises, our spending levels or our expenses will also rise. And at the end of the day, we don't have much more money left over than when we earned less. So that is lifestyle creep, that our expenses will automatically rise if we don't really take care. Before I started my current job, I actually said to myself, I do not want lifestyle inflation in my life. I first want to start saving for retirement, which I hadn't really done until that point. I want to start building an emergency fund and all of these things. So I actually did not change my standard of living, even though I now earn around 1000 euros more than I did before. So that's something to consider. If you're changing your job, if you're increasing your salary, don't automatically increase all your other expenses. Don't right away move to a new house. Reconsider, maybe you can wait and save that money. And even if it's just for a couple of months, if you really wanna move, then you can still do that after and just save a little bit of that extra money for a couple of months. So these are just some of my thoughts on lifestyle in general, but let me get to the examples. I think one of the biggest lifestyle costs are technology costs. So it's our phones, it's our laptops, all that. So I personally don't regularly buy new phones or laptops. I use them until they don't work anymore and I save a lot of money doing so. This phone, I actually bought it in 2018 and it's still working. It's starting to have a few issues here and there. And I've decided I will get a new phone next Black Friday. So in one year, I will make do with this phone for one more year beauty costs like nails or lashes. I don't get my nails done. I don't get my lashes done. I Well, lashes are less of a thing right now than they were a couple of years ago, but nails are still a thing. First of all, I wouldn't want to pay for it. And second of all, I used to play the piano for most of my life. So I've just gotten used to short nails and long nails annoy the heck out of me. Another point that I save a lot of money with, I don't really go out party. I just don't like it so much. And even as a student, I didn't really go out much. And if I did, I just never spend a lot of money. So there's a lot of saving potential there too. There are so many other categories in lifestyle like shopping, 
like clothes or beauty products. And there's so many things that you can analyze and see where are the categories that you spend most on. For me personally, I used to spend a lot of money on clothes and home decor. And of course, some other categories like travel, I would also spend a lot on. But when I looked at my values, I saw that travel was actually serving a purpose for me and was really fulfilling me. While clothes and home decor were mostly unnecessary purchases, they just cluttered up my life. So I actually decided to do a low spend this year. As you can see, I'm trying to cut down on spending on things that do not bring me joy, that do not add value to my life. So these are the things you can cut down on. There are two more things I wanna mention that have to do with financial costs. So first of all, the credit card. I always pay off my credit card balance in full every month so I don't pay interest on it. That's an easy way to save money right there because interest on credit card debt is very high. And the second thing, I choose my bank accounts and credit cards and also investment brokers with no monthly fees so that I don't have additional costs. There are so many options out there that do not charge monthly fees. And the only fees I pay are for investing if I want to buy or sell something, which is not completely true because if it's a monthly savings plan, then that's also free of fees. So these were my thoughts and examples on how you can save money in your 20s. Of course, there are so many more things. And please, if you have an idea, let me know in the comments down below. Let us collect all the ideas there in the comments. Let us share money tips so that we can all benefit from that. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you want to watch more content on money management, I will just link some video ideas right here that you can watch. And I'll see you in the next video.